Hello and welcome to Twist List, today we are looking at, 10 amazing forgotten explorers. Sometimes it's not enough to be the first, to go the farthest, or even to chart the uncharted. Historical memory can be a fickle mistress, which is why we've decided to write historical injustice and celebrate the oft-overlooked pioneers of exploration. The fifth spot on the list is occupied by, 4th century BC. Ibn Battuta, a son of middle-class Moroccan parents, was all set to become a lawyer and lead a traditional life. Then a pilgrimage to Mecca intervened. Once Batuta got there though, he pulled a forest gump and kept running, or in this case, riding his horse. After reaching Mecca, Batuta continued on to Persia and then back to Baghdad. Ibn Battuta then determined that he would go as far as possible as often as possible while never traveling the same route twice. For the next three decades, Ibn Battuta kept to his motto almost continuously and covered 120,000 kilometers, 75,000 miles, a feat unequaled for centuries. Actually tracing all of the traveler's routes means grabbing a map of Europe, Africa, and Asia, then marking it with enough ragged pen lines to begin rendering it incomprehensible. For most of his travels, Battuta traveled within the Muslim world. His insider status allowed him privileged access to and observation of the customs of far-flung peoples, which he recounted, not always entirely accurately, in the travels of Ibn Battuta. Number 4 on the list is, even more Auguste Picard. To be fair, Hanno has not been completely forgotten, the Carthaginian sea captain and original navigator is the titular inspiration for a 2008 song. Long before Pythias journeyed through the pillars of Hercules and North, Hanno made his way south along the West African coast, whereas several explorers are notable for their solo efforts, Hanno amazes with the incredible scale of his undertaking. Hanno's fleet consisted of 60 ships and 30,000 men and women. Hanno wasn't merely exploring, he was colonizing. And to that end he was successful, the Carthaginians established several lasting towns and trading posts. Unfortunately, dwindling provisions forced Hanno to abandon his attempt at, at the circumnavigating Africa 5. However, over 4,000 years before Stanley several intriguing references to Africa, the Egyptian court of was busy like the following. The vast Most of them were of women with hairy bodies. During the 23rd century BC, Hark fled for we could expeditions not catch any males, far they all escaped. From the Nile River bank. However, it's we believed that three Hark women carried who Egyptian to follow as far those as the kingdom of Yam, possibly modern day Chad. So we killed and, and flayed them and the brought their skins the former back would have to Carthage. Taken the explorer so, through hundreds of miles of unforgiving proud, desert, but the earliest probable and perhaps even the large primates, as Hark's two main scriptures and the point to have pride that the trek took only seven months. Hark's funerary inscription also suggests the Egyptian explorer encountered a pygmy tribe in his travels. That same inscription makes Hark the first explorer, of the imperial variety, in all of recorded history. Not the first explorer to cross or circumnavigate or discover the first explorer of written record. Ever. Ever. At the second spot is 1304 to 1368. Trivia fans and list verse readers probably know Magellan was killed well before he could complete the first circumnavigation of the world. Far fewer know the lengths his successor went to in finishing the last 16 months, or nearly half, of the voyage. Sure, Juan Sebastian Elcano was a mutineer, but to be fair, after almost a year of searching, Magellan's expedition still hadn't found its way around South America and the Spice Islands could never have seemed farther away. Considering only 18 of Magellan's 240 men actually made it back to Spain, maybe Juan Sebastian had reason to be worried. By the time Elcano assumed command following Magellan's death in the Battle of Mactan, only half the crew remained. And since Magellan had renounced his Portuguese citizenship to sail for the Spanish, Elcano and his ship, 
Victoria, were considered pirates within Portuguese waters, which was pretty much the entire Indian Ocean. Preferring starvation to probable execution, El Cano crossed and the finally, Indian Ocean with them putting into port. Hanno the Navigator. Thanks to this feat when Holman died in 1857, grim he was perhaps the most well-traveled man the one world third had of ever seen, having locked him then 400,000 kilometers, in truly 250,000 miles less in his lifetime. Holman hadn't planned on being a professional globetrotter and author, he originally aspired to be a British naval captain but a sudden illness at age 25 robbed him of his sight. Undaunted, Holman spent the entirety of his life seeking out new experiences in exotic lands. The blind traveler, as he became known, bucked cultural conventions, rejected travel companions, and refused to be treated as an invalid. Holman first crisscrossed Europe then attempted a mostly overland circumnavigation of the world, an attempt cut short when Russian authorities suspected him of actually being sighted and spying for Great Britain. Unfortunately, little documentation exists of Holman's actual routes over the next two decades, when he did the, the bulk of his traveling across Eurasia and Africa. Many people Even so, believe plenty of evidence remains of the man's adventures, like his ascent of Mount Vesuvius while it was erupting or his hunt of a mad elephant in Ceylon. Sadly, However, Holman's writing and travel were victims of the era's prejudice. The 19th century public refused to believe a blind man could observe the world around him with such insight and depth, on what actually and with the exception problems. of leading minds instance, like Charles Darwin and, later, Sir Richard Burton, and Holman's accomplishments were roundly ignored. In the brain and enlarged ventricles. Number 4 on the list is, sudden deaths attributed to demons. Back in the old days people would sometimes die with no explanation at all, considering the time period, if a doctor couldn't explain it people immediately attributed a supernatural explanation. It was fairly common that when someone died suddenly a fairy or a demon had taken them away in the night. However, this confusion can easily be attributed to sudden infant death syndrome. While researchers are still not completely clear on all of the causes, having babies sleep on their backs or sides greatly reduced the problem to begin with. Many other things have also been linked to SIDS and more is being discovered, the one thing they don't think it is, however, is demons or fairies. There is also a version of this condition for adults, not a lot is known, but cardiac arrhythmia is considered one of the chief culprits. At the third place we have, bewitchment, back in the days of the witch trials, and in some parts of the world still today, people did not understand epilepsy and the seizures it caused so they attributed it to witchcraft. Scientists at the time had little explanation for how it worked, and when people have no way of understanding something, they want to make an explanation for it. In this case witches made a perfect scapegoat for a condition that baffled them. But scientists understand now that epilepsy is caused by things within our own bodies and not anything supernatural. While not all cases are fully understood, it is clear that it is generally due to substance abuse, brain cancer, stroke and other fairly common issues.
At the second spot is, werewolves. The werewolf legend actually has a pretty simple explanation. It's a disease called hypertrichosis which causes the person to have an incredible growth of hair all over their body. One girl who has the disease was abandoned by her parents, presumably because they believed having a child with a freakish disease was more shameful than being parents who abandon their children. Hint, they were wrong. Anyway, someone adopted the child, and despite a lot of teasing, she is learning to cope with life. Her case is not as extreme as some, as she does not have much hair growth on her face like some cases do. However, as for the legend that they only change during the full moon, this is very easy to explain. Even now people consider it shameful, so of course back in the day people would have hid a family member who was afflicted and likely only let them go out at night. And when the night of the full moon, it might be bright enough for others to see them. And finally, at number 1, vampires. There are many contributing causes to the belief in vampires, all of them logically understandable. The explanations range from a poor understanding of decomposition to premature burial and other such things. To expound further, however, many suffered in the days of the legends from a disease called catalepsy which often caused people to be buried when they were in a state that only seemed dead. For further explanation, many believed there were vampire outbreaks, but most of them coincided with the outbreak of a disease such as the plague, or rabies which caused people to bite others and behave erratically. As for vampires' sensitivity to light, there is a disease called porphyria which includes sensitivity to light as one of its symptoms. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more then please hit the subscribe button.